What do Falcons do? Rise up. Welcome to Rise Up Reactions, a show we talk about things Falcons, NFL, Georgia sports, and in general, sports news of the day. I'm your host, Dr. Lee Denning, the lifelong sports fan, and the Golden Heart Doc coming to you with a quick recap on the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Falcons in London. Uh, Jacksonville being kind of a pseudo home team. I want to start off by doing this. Let me praise the defense. Effectively, the defense only gave up 16 points in this game. Really, I'm going to say they only gave up three points in this game because that last field goal at the end really didn't matter. They just happened to move the ball down on us enough to actually get into field goal range. Is you know basically there was functionally not much time left. So I'm not even going to really count that. The game was out of hand and already over at that point. There was really nothing we were going to be able to do to come back at that point. So I, I'm not going to give them any any um, shade for allowing those final three. But functionally kept what should be a high-flying offense like the Jacksonville Jaguars at bay. Uh, struggled to start with allowing 10 points early, which really put us in the hole for the rest of the game. But again, stepped up the rest of the way. And then we're going to stop, step into the problem here. Uh, the problem was offense, and not just any part of the offense. Uh, John Smith had a really good game. We are doing really well to find ways to get him the ball. Don't know why we're not giving his role to Kyle Pitts, who's more dynamic. Doesn't make sense to me, but you know I'm glad that we got John Smith for a seventh-round pick. But beyond that, Desmond Ritter... I, I have been a defender of Desmond Ritter, not because we drafted him. I never wanted to draft him. I wanted N'Kobe Dean where we took him. And I've been very clear about wanting N'Kobe Dean where we took him. N'Kobe Dean, I think, went one pick later than Desmond Ritter. And I, I wanted him because, A, I'm a Georgia Bulldog. B, he's a solid linebacker. Um, so, yeah, I have been very vocal about that. I don't know who we would have taken a quarterback otherwise. There really wasn't a quarterback in this uh, free agent class that I would have absolutely loved to have, not one that was making the rounds. I mean, I guess we could have been in the Derek Carr sweepstakes. That's not really going well for the Saints right now. Um, you know, we could have been in the Jimmy G sweepstakes, also not particularly going well for the Raiders right now. Um, there just wasn't really anybody. And that is the position that I – I have blamed other factors except for Desmond Ritter going into this game. And this time, he had time to throw. He They stepped up on the pass block. They were doing pretty well overall. He did get sacked four times. I would argue that a couple of those were his own fault. He should have gotten rid of the ball quicker. He needed to get rid of it. He just was not seeing the field. Something was wrong with him. But one pick six followed by another pick that I can't believe they didn't get points off of right there at the end of the second half. Um, he just didn't look good. He had another one that should have been picked off uh, later on in the game. And Desmond Ritter is leading the league right now in passes that should be picked off. Basically, turnoverable plays. Leading the league on pace to outpace the Jameis Winston 30 interception season, even though they have not turned into that. Jameis Winston was not even on the same pace that he is. Jameis Winston just got unlucky in how many of those turnoverable balls were actually turnovers. Uh, Desmond Ritter is looking to smash that, and that's through four games this season. I have said the one thing he could not do coming into the season was try to play hero ball, was do anything more than be a game manager because he's not built to be that. He is not a gunslinger. He's not Patrick Mahomes. Now, what are we going to do at quarterback? Season's not over. We have eight games of film to look at Ritter and see what we have in him now. I think he gets to start against Houston. He might get to start against the Commies if he plays well. But if he doesn't play well in the next two games... I think we definitely need to bench him in favor of Taylor Heineke. I think Heineke should come out to play and probably should have in this game. Ritter was not on it. And this is where I give credit to a coach like Nick Saban in college who, with a star quarterback in a big in a big stage, will make a change. If he thinks that it's going to improve the outcome of the game, he'll make a change. So either Arthur Smith has no faith in Taylor Heineke or he just wants to maintain some sort of faith in Ritter. And Ritter just doesn't have that quality yet. He's not that guy yet. He still needs to, if he's going to be that guy, he still needs to develop. He's a guy that needed to sit behind a veteran, a good veteran, 
for about two or three seasons before he would really see what we had in him. Instead, he got thrust into the spotlight early, um, and he was sitting behind Marcus Mariota, who was not a good quarterback, and then got thrust into the starting role here in Atlanta. I do think Heineke is a better option for this season if we're looking to make the playoffs. I don't know that he is a long – he's definitely not a long-term man, so let's, let's put it out there. He's not the long-term solution for us. Um, I don't know what we're going to do. We freed up some cap space with the Jake Matthews extend or not extension, but renegotiation or restructuring of his contract, seven point one million, I believe. Which let's do a real quick look because I don't know what that does. Atlanta Falcons salary cap. Let's see where we're at right now. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons currently we have about nine million in cap space right now. So we we do have some extra space here. Uh, to do some things. I don't know what that would look like. I don't know what we would have to do to maybe get a guy like, you know, to, to get a quarterback in there. As far as guys on the market, you know, the joke is that Matt Ryan is still on the market. We're not going to get Matt Ryan. He's retired. Um, nor do I necessarily want him back after the way he played at the end of his career there. Um, so we're not going to get Matt Ryan back. You have guys like Carson Wentz who are still out there. Um, you have big, uh, big Nick Foles who is out there as well, and then you would be making a trade for a lot of other guys. Now, tradable people, if I thought that we were going to make a trade, the Vikings have won a game. I don't think they're going to trade Kirk Cousins, but I think we could give a fourth or third round pick and get Kirk Cousins if they start doing poorly the rest of the way. And I think Kirk Cousins is an immediate upgrade. He's a top 12 quarterback in the league. Say what you want about him. Say what you want about his ability to win in the big moments. We don't have somebody that can win in the big moments right now. We need somebody who's a little bit more pocket presence and who can basically scare opponents in the secondary so that they're not loading the box to stop Bajan and Tyler. Tyler was very ineffective yesterday, um, and it was mostly because we didn't have much of a pass presence. They could load the box. It was very easy to see a seven-man rush coming on almost every single play just because they knew we weren't really going to throw the ball. They weren't scared of a deep ball from Ritter. We need a quarterback that's going to make them scared. I think Taylor Heineke would make them scared because they know that he can do it. Um, and I think, again, training for somebody like Kirk Cousins makes sense to me. Don't think we'll end up doing it, so don't roast me in the comments on that. I'm just talking out of my head here thinking what would be a good idea. This one's a tough one. Um, I didn't really think that we were going to win this one. We're still 500. The season is not over. We still have three-quarters of a season left, and we have the easier part of the schedule coming up, at least on paper. Guys, I have not yet hit my 500 subscriber goal. If you have not done so, thank you to the 179 of you who have. I don't know why you guys choose to follow me, but I'm certainly appreciative of it. Um, for any of you who have not and have watched this video, please consider subscribing and liking. It helps me grow as a channel, helps me reach more people. And you can just watch me probably sit in misery a little bit more often on Mondays as we go through the rest of the season. But as always, guys, rise up.